Welcome back to the TMCJ podcast. We are now on segment three, our wild card segment. Uh, and considering, as I said at the end of the previous segment, that we're recording this just before uh, the New Year's and we'll, this will be released just after New Year's, I thought, well, we, we, we talked about this. We thought that um, talking about New Year's resolutions would be a, a good thing to have in this segment. Now, opening up to begin with, I thought we'd chat a little bit about the kind of the concept in general. I, I honestly don't know where the idea comes from. I probably should have looked that up. That seems like a random piece of trivia that I would normally have to hand, but I don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you know where they actually even came from, the idea of it? I don't know. Probably. Well, I mean, I, I can extrapolate, kind of. Mm-hmm. Go for I, it. I assume... Being as it's kind of the the new year, it's a new start for everybody, and uh, people people always look back on the last year. And generally, it's it's not often that people look back on a year and think, "Man, that was a really good year." Obviously, this year has been particularly bad, but um, so I think everyone tries to make themselves and, by extension, the rest of the world a little bit better for the next year. So while you were saying that, I did just quickly look it up on my phone, and I—I sh- I mean, based on what you just said, it and does. You're completely fucking wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. You, I think you're you hit the nail perfectly on the head. It's oh, something nice. that is just so obvious and ubiquitous. It's been around for quite some time. Uh, hmm. It's actually credited to the Babylonians four thousand years ago. Damn. So what good babies. There's, there's at least it's credited in, in that there's evidence that they they were making New Year's resolutions um, in the Babylonian Empire, so that's that's interesting that it's that old. But yeah, mm, I, I think there is a certain art to making a New Year's resolution. Yeah, it's absolutely a good thing to aim high, but I think it's also equally important to do something that is in fact manageable because mm. there is nothing worse than setting a goal for yourself. And then not being able to, to, to achieve it. Right, because don't like uh, most people, I, I remember hearing somewhere that most people have dropped them by like mid-February. Exactly. Like, uh, if, if you're going to do like a, a, a getting fit kind of thing, then say, you know, I'll do, you know, five press-ups every day. Don't do something crazy. You can do more than that, mm. but the resolution should be five a day. For yeah. you know, three months, whatever it is, yeah. or like the the resolution shouldn't be like, oh, I want to get six pack abs. It should be, well, I'm gonna work out at least three times a week. <laughs> yeah, let's try and get like two pack, and then <laughs> <laughs> is it wasn't two pack a rapper? I oh, think he was. That's yeah, two pack, two, two pack. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really know. No, but uh, but yeah, like set a resolution. Like you might have in your head, you want to get really fit or something like that. So don't say I'm gonna get really fit and just leave it vague. Say like I'm not even three times. Say like I'm gonna work out and do a good workout at least twice a week. Something yeah, super manageable, and, and you can do more than that if you want. It's not some binding legal document. So it's it, it's it's something for yourself and yourself only, really. Mm. Um, don't get anxious because of it like a part of one of the great things about it is that it is something that's achievable and so you do get that happiness when you do finally complete it and kind of self-worth really yeah um because like i said it, it you're not doing it for someone else you're not doing it to, to look good in someone else's eyes necessarily it's just about making yourself a little bit happier for the new year which Given how January and February are always miserable, uh, I'm sorry for birthdays in January or February. Uh, it's kind of a nice uh, pick me up. I, I I don't really as have would be your birthday with January. <laughs> uh, it's just freezing, and I, I hate the cold. <laughs> gotcha. And it's it rains a lot. There's like no light. Oh, right. I, I'm a big summer person. It rains a lot there. Here we get some uh, blizzards. Oh well, yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, I can see. They they said the same thing. Uh, the college I went to divided our. We didn't do semesters. We did terms. So there were four terms in a year instead of two semesters. Yeah. And um, the there was one term that went from January to early March. I think it was, and 
yeah, that, that was always like it. People, everyone around campus was always like, oh yeah, this is the depressing one. This is where people start to fail classes and stuff because everyone's miserable. I didn't really mind it that much because I, I, I am a cold weather person. Like, yeah, that's my my time of year. It, in my experience, the time when everyone drops out is like right at the beginning of the year, like in the first month of starting a new course. That's when like forty percent of people are just like, uh, okay, I clearly cannot because they lay it on thick at the beginning of the year. I feel like yeah. to kind of I don't say weed out, but. So that people know if it's not for them, you want to drop out now. You don't want to drop out, you know, three quarters of the way through the year where you know a whole bunch of stuff and you've spent all this money on the course, but you're not going to get anything from it because you don't enjoy it. Yeah, and that was something... It was something that it wouldn't be the first month at the school I went to. It would be like the first week or two because the, Mm. the courses were only seven weeks long. Um, oh, okay. The terms were, it was like I said. I've said previously, it was an engineering uh, college, and the way that they their their teaching style was to teach you how to learn very quickly. So, if you couldn't, you you instead of having six courses over like four months or five months, you had three courses over seven weeks, and it was meant to just like help you focus in really hard on the material for like one course and really get you to take all of that information in and learn it as quickly as possible yeah i really liked that style i found it a lot of fun anyway we're not talking about new year's resolutions anymore how did we get here (laughs) (laughs) um so (laughs) there's a lesson for you that that's something that can help you with your new year's resolution that's a lesson on staying focused right man maybe that's what the, the the cumulative podcast um, one should be <laughs> need to stay on topic more. What is happening with my audio? I I don't know. I get I get feedback. People kind of like it when we ramble a little bit. Oh, okay. Well then, forget what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> but so, in t- but you're right though. Like a lot of you got to set manageable. That's that's just good life advice in general though. Is is good goals management. It, the, the whole reason this podcast is still going is, like, when we started it, we didn't go, like, okay, we're going to, our goal is to have, like, you know, a thousand subscribers in, like, you know, eight months. And oh, no. we didn't want to have, like, it wasn't going to be, like, regimented. It was like, let's take it slow. We did a few test cases. Then we did a full one. Then we sort we let it evolve and grow naturally. Yeah. And I think that... Uh... That's made it more of a positive experience and one that's still going rather than a stressful one. Yeah, it's 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 been super chill. Um, I say super chill. We have put work and time into it, mm-hmm. um, but it doesn't it's, feel like work. When, well, yeah, okay, it's, we put time into it. Um, when we get to, uh, like when when a, a, an episode goes out. Uh, and we're always kind of like it's always nice to see how many whether whether people have tuned in to listen to it. Mm. Um, so even in the early days when we were getting like two views, if we were lucky, on YouTube. Uh, I mean, to be fair, on YouTube we still we still don't get too many views. Yeah, but <laughs> most other platforms and stuff. Um, but it's 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 just like yeah, well. We we enjoy it so much that it doesn't matter anyway. If it ever became a thing where we didn't enjoy making them, it probably wouldn't be a thing. Well, and that's that. I think to bring it back to New Year's resolutions, I think that's another good point to be made there. Like the New Year's resolution should be something that you're doing to improve yourself, right? So, like, yeah. if if it gets to the point where you're stressing out because you're like, I'm not going to keep this resolution. Oh, it's so hard to keep this. Re- then don't do it. Like, yeah. it, it's, you need to, like, pick something, so, like, the fitness one earlier, right? Mm-hmm. You know, if you just want to, like, be healthy and stay in shape, like, that's why you just say, I'm going to work out. And you do work, you find workouts and things that are, like, good for you. Or, I, to take it away from workouts, the news resolution I had for this year, and I, I tried to set a manageable, manageable one. So, previously, um, to... I, 
I learned uh, Spanish at a young age because my hometown was half Hispanic. And so they taught us Spanish all the way up from like first grade. And so like my Spanish is still pretty good. I need a little bit of practice whenever I'm trying to strike up a conversation. But I find that I can talk to people in Spanish manageably well. I sound horrible because my grammar and vocabulary is that of a two-year-old. But I can still do it. So my, my And I also have um, some experience with German because I learned that in college. Uh, but that, is, that isn't nearly as good. So my resolution at the beginning of this year was I wanted to practice one of those two languages throughout the year, and by the end of the year, be able to read uh, like a full story in Spanish without the need to look up and translate things or something like that. And right. so I, I that's what I... So I that's just, quite a hard goal, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? I, I, I would categorize that as like on the harder end. Right. Of, uh, resolutions. The reason I said I, I thought of this as a more manageable one is because my I, I've learned Spanish previously. It's part it, like it's still in my mind. I can say you know basic phrases and and stuff like that. So I really just needed to expand my vocabulary, get some practice mm. reading, and Recap. yeah, exactly. And but I really the biggest weakness was expanding my vocabulary because that was what was the poorest. So I got yeah. like language apps. I had I have Rosetta Stone and I have um, uh, Duolingo, which is the free one. I practiced it off and on throughout the year, and by I think it was mid October, I was able to read like a full short story in Spanish, and I was able. It was a short story meant for like you know uh, I think like older children or like younger teens. So right, I think not, I think I remember you showed it to me. I think. Yeah, not not like super advanced Spanish, but I was. Mm. I set a manageable goal, one that I knew I would be able to, to meet even if I had setbacks throughout the year because work did ramp up and there were times where I didn't have time to practice. But by by not even by the end of the year, but by October, I was able to do it. So that that's the thing is like setting, like knowing your own abilities, doing something that you enjoy because I really enjoy learning languages. So th those are like the, the two key tenets that we've, we've come across so far. Set manageable goals that will still kind of get you to where you want to be and have it be a positive thing. Have it be something that you enjoy. And yeah, you do get I mean, that. That kind of makes me think of. Um, I obviously used to play guitar a lot and uh, hmm. I kind of had to give it up with all the work I was doing. I could pick that up. Um, but I don't know. It's. I don't have too much room <laughs> where I'm living at the moment. Uh, so I, I don't know if I should. I, I I'm I'm slightly struggling to, to work out what I would, I would have for this year. Um, yeah, I'm. I want to think about the German again now. Hmm. Yeah, cause, right, because you've been you've been trying to pick up German. Yeah, I did. Um, quite intense for like a month, and then again it kind of started slipping. Um. But I, I have no excuse for that, so maybe maybe that is something I should um, jump back into because I did enjoy it. Mm. I just kind of forgot somewhat about it. Yeah, and you know, th there's something that I there was a piece of advice that I got like quite a while back um, when I used to do. Uh, so I used to do uh, CrossFit. Um, this was years ago, uh, probably 2012 ish. Um, I, I would not recommend, I would not recommend CrossFit, um, especially if you're out of shape. Um, it, like I was in pretty good shape at the time and doing that, like it was base, it was like a boot camp sort of thing. I was, I was in the best shape of my life after I finished it. It was extremely expensive, which is why I stopped, but they did, there was one good, and it also, it feels a little cultish. I don't know. I don't, the, you're not meant to do piece of workout advice. The human body is not meant to do Olympic style lifts in rapid succession. Like they're meant to be like one off things that you do to showcase how like the kind of shape you're in. Doing them in rapid succession can cause some serious damage. Little little caveat there. But anyway, the one good piece of advice they gave was you know, if you're feeling under the weather, if you're not feeling good, you you're super busy, you don't have time, but it's a day that you would normally do a workout do something. It doesn't have to be your normal workout. So say normally you run a mile 
and lift weights for a little bit and then do some sit-ups. That's just say that's your normal workout. You don't have time because you've got work, you've got family problems, you're sick, you've got stuff to do around the house. Just do something. Do like five push-ups, right? And then call it a day. Just to keep what that does from a psychological perspective is you're not trapping yourself into this idea that I don't have time. If I can't do it, I should just do the whole thing or nothing at all. What it does is it like you're still keeping to it. You don't have time, so you've reduced your workout. But in your mind, you're still keeping to that routine. And I, I find that if I stop working out altogether because I don't have time and because I don't have time to do a full workout, I'm more likely to just throw the schedule out the window for a whole week. Whereas if I do a little bit of something, then if I have time later in the week, I'll continue and I'll do a more expansive workout. And I, I feel like you're, it's repetition. It's repetition and routine. Like that's another way to keep these, we keep going back to workouts, I'm realizing. Yeah, it's because workouts tend to be what people do for, um, for New Year's resolutions. For New Year's resolutions. Um, I, was, I, I don't know if you remember, I used to do, um, do running a lot mm. uh, in the mornings. That's another thing I could go back to. Yeah, God, re- there's so many things. I remember we, just we were of... using the same app to track it for a while. Yeah, Strava. Um, and I, so I'm the kind of person, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive hypocrite, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go out and I, I, I do a run, I'd be like, right, I've got, I went this far today. Tomorrow I've got to do that point one, Like mm-hmm. that and a little bit more. Yeah. Um, uh, and so I would kind of start like, it was quite a brutal regime. Uh, it definitely made me, over the course of like a week, I doubled the distance I could I could run. Hmm. Um, and after like three weeks, I was in really good shape. And then I kind of hit a wall where I was like, a, a, a definite a point where I was trying to go even further. But like, but you hit my body wasn't quite ready for it yet. Speaking of of like you know running and, and workouts in general, there there is a point of diminishing returns. Like you can there do, is. like at the beginning when you're only running like a mile or two, increasing it by point one every time you go for a run. That's that's manageable. When you start yeah. getting into like the really long distances, like the six, seven, eight, nine mile range, unless you're going yeah. for like a marathon time, if you're trying to stay fit, then that's you're actually going to be, um, it, it's kind of going to be to your detriment, especially if you're trying to build up any sort of muscle mass, because your body's <laughs> going to be burning so many calories that the running is actually detrimental. Yeah. I quite like having like you on the app, because you, you're, you're definitely better than me, but you weren't like out of my league. So the reason I got the app and started doing it in the first place was because um, I was talking to my dad about it. Dad, my dad has been doing like park runs and things for a, f- a few years now I think mm. and I'd kind of look at I'd complete mine I was like holy moly I did really well this time I went like I ran for you know I don't know three miles without stopping mm-hmm. whatever and then I look at the app and it would be like oh dad has run for 15 miles today I'm like oh my god what <laughs> <laughs> it's just like so far. he's like it's my dad he's, he's like going great sorry dad i love you lots um <laughs> he's like freaking usain bolt and i'm like a fat kid in school <laughs> <laughs> well that's not I, um, I so i have um a cousin and an uncle they they do like those crazy like desert marathons where they, they're like they run right. through arizona when it's like 108 degrees out oh, and they're, they're running Christ. for like 20 something miles oh God. And they they can yeah. they can do it and they they do and I'm just like hold I I am not I mean, a marathon how's that possible runner. yeah um and I'm like well they must you know like take breaks and like stop to breathe every so often I just I just keep running no matter what that's kind of my if I stop as far as I'm concerned that's me out oh yeah I, I'm um, the exact same way but uh, I don't think they even do because I've spoken to them and they're like yeah no I don't do that um but it's just they they've been doing it for years I think and so. I guess eventually you do get to that point. Um, yeah. so maybe, maybe, right, maybe 
my New Year's resolution, because I'm I'm more inclined to get back into that, because I remember when I was doing it, there were people around me, and they were like, after you've done these runs, you have been just more positive. You've been a happier person for doing these runs. Mm. <laughs> um, so I, I think it, it's it's good for me. I I should get back to it, but I should stop. I shouldn't make it quite such. So well, it's such a brutal regime. I think. Uh, yeah. Like, so me, I, I I took basically the entire month of November. I didn't run. Um, mm. And I started getting back into it in December. I bought like cold weather running gear, and I've I've been doing fairly well about running at least like once a week. I, yeah. Again, it's it's one of those manageable things. I'm trying to just ease myself back into my old regime. I'm like I'll just I'll go for like you know at least two miles, and I will try to keep up like a, a decent pace and just just to get my body used to it again. Because taking a month off, it takes a while to to get you back into it. Yeah. Um and I was able to to do that pretty well. If it wasn't for the ice, I'd be hitting like, you know, 9 minute miles on um on them. But the the hard thing for me I I'm finding is my my legs didn't lose too much in in terms of anything, but it was it was my my breathing. Like I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I I had like I had asthma as a as a child and so I right. I've always had fairly weak lungs. So unless I keep up the the workouts then i i I tend to to get worse in that regard yeah that's what i found the first few times went running i would like gasping for air after a very short amount of time yeah after the first week um again my my breathing improved greatly um part of it and then when i stopped doing it for a month and tried it again it went back to you know very rough Part of this is that the human body is incredibly lazy. Um, so if you <laughs> if you run for quite a bit of time and you have that like short of that shortness of breath, then the body will be triggered to start producing more red blood cells. So the same air is giving you more oxygen to more places, hmm. um, and you don't need as much. You don't you know, like you don't need a big gasping breath because your body has enough red blood cells that it absorbs enough oxygen just from like a normal breath. Uh, it's why one of the the reasons, one of the good measures they use when you're running, is if you can hold a conversation while you're running, that's that's a good sign. Like if you're, say you're keeping up a decent jogging pace and you're able to talk on the phone or chat with somebody that you're running with, that's a, a pretty good sign that you're actually uh, in decent shape because you have enough air to do both. Yeah. You're not gasping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now. I do, I do want to bring this back to the topic we originally opened up with. I think we are on topic. Uh, yeah, go on. This has become this has become the fitness segment. Well, uh, it's become the the self improvement segment, which I think it is. The, it's the, on brand. It's the purpose of a New Year's resolution is self improvement. I think. Yeah. Um. But that being, but yes, absolutely, it doesn't have to be physical. Like you could. You know, just just be wanting to improve your social skills or something, and, and I think that's a really good. And that's that's what I was about to ask: is can you recall or think of any um, oh, what was it? Any um, any instances you've heard of of people doing like non non fitness related uh, self improvement uh, things, non fitness or non health? Okay, I was going to say there's certainly a lot of people who are like, I want to stop drinking or smoking. Well, right, yeah, uh, that, that's that's the reason I'm, th- I'm thinking. Like, I've heard those same things too. Um, yeah, and I think they are very good things if you can do them. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> and it, like, if you, but again, I think that people go overboard with them. Yeah. Like, say, I don't know. Say, say you're you're you are drinking way too much. Don't go. I'm gonna stop drinking. Go like I'm gonna drink like X amount less per week or something. I mean, like I, that. I or I if you do that, but um. I it, it it wasn't something where I was like, one second I'm fine with it, and the next I was like, I'm just gonna completely stop drinking. It was, um, at the end of a, a long, a long stream of drinking, and I had been like, look, this is, this is this is really bad. It's costing a lot of money. Yeah. And so, I did I did cold turkey, and I stopped drinking, and it was really rough. <laughs> Um, 
And now I can I can happily have a drink. I can even, you know, have a lot of drinks on one time and then for the next week or so I'm just like, nope, I'm not drinking anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean I did um I think that's one of the, the prime benefits of I did I did sober October with um with uh Yes, I remember. And I feel like it's healthy to do that every now and again. Not yeah, only with with the alcohol is the one that people focus on with stuff like that, but with anything. Like if you're say you, you have fast food too often, you know, take a month where you give up going out to eat and just instead you are going to cook for yourself and you're going to cook healthy food. Like I feel like you mm-hmm. come out on the other side better because you you're essentially temp- temporarily breaking a habit, and once you do that. If even if you go back to doing whatever the behavior was, you're yeah. not gonna. It's not gonna be as bad. So like, you know, for instance, I'm gonna use fast food as an example. Say you you know you're eating out at like McDonald's like four days a week, right? Right. You take a month and you're like, I'm not gonna have that's, any fast food tragic. for this whole month. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so at the end of it, maybe you go back and have it again. But now that you're not used to it, it isn't part of your normal routine. Mm. Um. Suddenly, maybe you are only having it like once every two weeks or something like that. It's not as much of a a routine, as much of a craving. Yeah, and I I think one of the main uh, litmus tests for that kind of thing, whether that has worked, is when you get to the end of those uh, periods where you're completely, you know, trying to avoid something. There are people that say, "Oh, thank God, that's over. Now I can drink or eat." Yeah. <laughs> That kind of, and that the 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 goal of it is not to stop yourself doing the thing; it's to change your mindset so yeah. that you don't want to do that thing. Exactly, and that that's one of the things. Like, um, if you know the the whole New Year's resolution, stopping smoking was one um, in there. Mm. I, I think that rather than saying i'm just gonna quit cold turkey some people cold turkey works my dad used to smoke all the time and he he did he quit cold turkey and yeah. he never Normally went back because of family yeah never went like and some people can do that they they have the willpower and the resolve to just say nope i'm done um but other people like if you're not confident you will be able to or you're worried that you know you'll hold off for a little bit and then do exactly what you just said, which is come back on the other side and go like, I'm going to smoke 18 packs of cigarettes. Um, mm. It just, it might be better to, to just do a news resolution. Like I'm smoking like, you know, I don't know, two packs. I don't know. I, I don't smoke, but <laughs> I'm smoking like two packs of cigarettes a week. Right. So I'm going to try to get that down to one. That's, that's your resolution for the year. Get it down to one. And maybe you get down to one and you feel like, I can get this down even lower, and you can, but the resolution should be reasonable in that mm. you're just trying to, to cut back and be more responsible. Maybe smoking's a uh, bad example, but well, that's that's yeah. what I'm I'm thinking uh, is along those. It, going back to the original, it, it's about setting reasonable <laughs> goals. Yeah. Um, and Yeah, we have been talking an awful lot about health, and it's quite a deep subject. Um, I also kind of want to read a bit more, because... I mean, I, I don't have the again. I don't have really oh. the space in my room to hold many books, but I, I, I it's been so long since I've gone audible, and uh, that you know those sexy dinosaurs aren't going anywhere. <laughs> um, that is an episode. Does that, that need we... clarification or not? I don't think it does. Uh... <laughs> that is an episode that has been uh, promised for quite some time that we still haven't done. Oh, uh, yeah, but no, I think that's that. That is another good one. Um, I I actually did a resolution one year. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. I have a I had a resolution one year where I wanted to finish more things. Mm. So typically, I I I do read quite a bit. I I play quite a few video games. I I pick up quite a few projects and then fiddle with them for a while and then drop them. So I, I did a resolution to try and commit to finishing the things that I'm starting. So like if I start a TV show, even if it loses me, I'm going to finish it. Like assuming this TV show is already over and not ongoing. Uh, yeah. if, I, if I pick up a book, even if it starts to kind of lose me in places before I pick up another book, I'm going to finish it. 
Uh, yeah. Same thing with a video game. It, like, I pick up this video game, I'm having some fun with it, but then, oh, another video game comes out and I want to play that. No, I have to finish the other one first. And yeah. and so that was that was one resolution that, you know, non-fitness related thing that I, I tried. And I actually found myself feeling a lot more satisfied having finished the things rather than, because you don't get as much satisfaction when you pick something up, you know, fiddle with it for a bit and then drop it. Yeah, and I- also, I think it's good to get, if there's someone else who's doing uh, a resolution that you know, um, getting each other, like, amped up to doing it is is a really yeah. good and fun just way of doing things. Uh, I know, I've, <laughs> certainly after this podcast, I definitely feel like going out and, like, just running now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be lifting uh, some weights after this. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, if there's someone else that you know, um, absolutely like share that kind of stuff with them and try and uh, try try and help each other with your resolutions because yeah. it can be tough uh, and just that extra little bit of support can really do it. Right, there are people out there who can entirely motivate themselves. Like they they once they make a promise to themselves, they're going to fulfill it. But I I feel like those people are in the minority. Like, but exactly what you said. If you make a resolution with somebody else and you're like, hey, you know, you and I, we're going to go to the gym three days a week, you know, for the next three months and we're really going to get fit. And you feel like you're letting somebody else down when you don't keep to that kind of commitment. And I feel like that that does, maybe that's putting it. Yeah, it's it's motivation. Maybe that's putting a bit of a negative spin on it, but <laughs> what, what I mean is like it's a it's a support thing. Like people, we're, we're social animals. Like you you need to have, or it, not you don't need to have it, but it does help when you're trying to accomplish something like that with somebody else. And I feel personally like you get a lot more satisfaction when both of you cross the finish line and you're like, we both set out and accomplished this goal. Yeah. Just gonna, just gonna really get amped to read the Hobbit. Yeah, <laughs> I did the audiobook. Bilbo the Burns. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I I did I have I have read the Hobbit. I did the well not read it. I did an audiobook. I I have actually read the book of the Hobbit, but yeah, that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was there was another um, thing. So recently, I haven't talked about it on the podcast because there's a a book club discussion, and I know the, yes, the person. Was- the person who asked me to read the book um, listens to this, so I didn't want to talk about it on here. But after that discussion, I will be talking about that on the podcast. Okay, um, yeah. And that's, that's going to be next week, right? Probably next week, yeah. Um, but I finally finished the book. But point being, I probably this probably wouldn't have been a book that I read or would have cared to finish beyond like the first five pages had I not had somebody else who was expecting me to finish and wanted to discuss it with me. Yeah, and so, was it worth it? It was actually because the book, like it, it gets off to a very slow boil. Mm-hmm. Um, but even the first, like once you get past the first chapter, it really picks up and gets interesting. The ending can be a bit contentious, um, to say the least. But the rest of the book, like, was it was definitely worth reading, and I found myself very interested and engaged with all of the characters and the story in general um yeah just another another example of that like you're right though having having somebody else there to kind of keep you on point yeah uh case in point if uh this podcast was just me solo it probably wouldn't have been going this long well (laughs) so what do i think uh well good good point me uh <laughs> there are solo podcasts out there where people just kind of rant and rave about whatever topic has to be at mind. Really? Oh, that sounds tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they're out there. Uh well, okay, so we are we are actually coming near the end of this uh this thing. Any final thoughts do we want to talk about? Have you considered anything that you're thinking of doing as a New Year's re- resolution? Uh I think I mean, after the, these discussions, because like I said earlier, I, I'm there's a lot of things I could do and I'm kind of unsure about. Mm. Um, but honestly, I, I'm feeling like running now and I feel like it's something I could sustain. So I'm going to set... Um, 
uh, Alright, I don't want to set it too high, as we said, but also saying that it's actually going to like get me out of the house. Yeah. So I'm going to say, like, a mi- at least minimum mile run a day, with exceptions to, like, yeah, um, you know, family crisis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going for, like, an average of run- one a day, so if you run, like, three miles on Monday, you can take two. Yeah, maybe, that, so. maybe that's the thing. If, if I do end up missing out on... I'm going to try and do it every day, mm-hmm. but if... Um, yeah, if I do have to miss one, then I'll I'll run two on another day. Yeah, uh, because yeah, it's I do spend too much time in the house, and just getting out in the fresh air will do me good. Plus, obviously, exercise will always do you good. Yeah, I got to think about this for myself. I haven't actually. So this year, like I said, I had more of a a mental intellectual kind of resolution. Right. But going into to next year, I feel like. Um, Again, maybe it's because we talked about so much physical stuff. I might be mm-hmm. doing something similar, like making a resolution to ensure that I have a certain... I don't want to do a minimum number of workouts a week because I do actually work out pretty much every day of the week anyway, of to varying degrees. So I, I've got to put some more thought into mine. But my, the two things that are in my mind right now are some kind of a fitness one similar to what you're talking about um to to make sure i maintain this workout regime that i've developed during the quarantine uh and then alternatively i could continue on with my spanish uh learning and uh make the resolution to try and be able to read a novel by the end of next year Mm, tricky so i've already i've done a short story this year maybe i can actually read uh, an actual book next year Mm. if i keep going with it so I've got some oh. thought to put in, but th- those are what's yeah. on my mind. And and just relating more closely to home, um, I also uh, I'm gonna try and put more time into keeping <laughs> keeping the TFCJ podcast Twitter up to date because it's been weeks <laughs> since I've been on there, um, and I've been mean to and I feel bad about it. But right now I'm gonna at least get the 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 weekly thing down so that. You know, if you want a bit of information, a bit of a, sp- I was gonna say spoiler, a bit of a cheeky peek at what will be happening at the end of the week, you can go over to Twitter and have a look at. Uh, I might drop a hint mm. on uh, what we talk about. Yeah, it'll be there uh, if you're one of these uh, strange people that use Twitter. <laughs> yes, strange, strange people. <laughs> oh man! All right, well let's let's end it there. That's that's kind of a, a good place to stop. So. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys, for when this comes out, it will be after New Year's. So, hopefully, you had a happy New Year, a happy and safe New Year. And um, hopefully, you've come up with some uh, decent resolutions. Or if you haven't found them quite yet, hopefully, we've helped you think of some. Uh, either way, this is the end of episode 22 of the TMCJ podcast. Thank you once again for listening to us, and hopefully, you'll tune in again soon. Hope you've had a very merry New Year. <laughs>